This is lab two, uh, continuing on um, part B, uh, part two of lab two. So let me pick up where we left off. I had you create, open up a notepad, if you could for me. We create two subdirectories uh, up to this point and having a folder uh, with exactly what we need to do. So with this file right now, I need for you to create a file that's called numeric type underscore java so why don't you take this file that I have this notepad and just do file save as and I'd like for you to find the directory that we're about to put in you're going to save this into that directory uh, do your code copy it over to the java.bin and then you're going to compile it make sure it works and everything with it and then you bring it back to your zip file and then both of those files that you work on it you would actually upload to me. Okay, I take a screenshot of it, of course. So here's lab two, here's lab directory, here's the lab directory. Now, if you recall, you need to call this thing by what its name, numeric, the same spelling as what's in that class file with it. So it needs to be numeric types dot java, okay? So be sure you do a pull down on this thing and select all files with it. You notice it already has that file that I put into the lab directory a few minutes ago. So save this thing. Here it is. All right, here it is. Now, here's what I need for you to do. Again, uh, I'm going to document this as we go. I need to have your your name on all these things. Your name goes here, and this goes after this. If you ever take me for a computer science class or your junior level, all the way up to um, your university and all this, you need to put your course number, whatever course this is. This is 14. 37, whatever section it happens to be. So, dot dot dot. I'll just put you, you fill in the blank and tell me what this lab is. This is lab number two. This is we're about to do the numeric, numeric types. Okay. Anyway, so uh, this is the the part of the lab that you're gonna come in and start with. Again, you gotta have public. Your basic skeleton for this thing is public class numeric, the same name as your file, numeric types. Okay, you know, open up the curly brackets, and inside this curly brackets, you will have public static void main, and you still have the word string, square brackets, and your argument goes here. And that opens up another set. So this is basically your front door, your entrance to your code. Okay. So a few things. This is just the basic skeleton for every code that you're going to come across with this thing, except for the name of your file needs to look exactly like this. Okay. It needs to look exactly like this. So what this program does, let me give you a little description. This program, this program uh, demonstrates how numeric types and operator behave. Okay. Um, more important is what um, you know. That's that's it's you know you're you're gonna uh, how numeric types and the op your basic operators. If you recall, there's two types of operator relation and, and and logical operators that we talked about. So that's the type of stuff we're gonna get into here. This part right here, and I'm, I'm, as we go through this, uh, I'm going to at this point I'm going to comment on a lot of the section so you can actually follow along with the same. All right, so let's come into back to our task one. Okay, our task one is says correct the formula, logical formula in the lab. I'll pass out hard copy in this case. I will give you a video in this thing. So I'm going to give you a formula in this thing and compile the source code, run the farm, observe the output of this thing. So I'm going to have you come in here, all right? So uh, take a look at this formula. Here's an average formula of score 1 plus score 2 uh, divided by the number score. That will give you the average, right? That's how we grew up on it. You need to correct logic errors in the formula and the temperature conversion for the thing. The logic error could be due to conversions between data types. Now that relates to what's called casting. You got to be careful with that, all right? Uh, order of operation from formula problems with it. Here are the necessary formula with it. Each time you make a change to the program code, you must compile again to see the changes would take an effect before you run the program. So uh, make sure you 
take the output makes sense before you continue. So the average of 95 and 100 should be about 97.5, and the temperature boils at 100 degrees Celsius, and that type of stuff with it. Okay, so before I move on and, and talk about some of the stuff that we're going to get in here, I'm going to give you some numbers in this thing, you know, right? And I would like for you to come in and 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 put in some of the numbers that we talk about in, in this as well. So um, here's just correction of logical errors with this thing. So um, okay, let me check the minutes here. Yeah, we done good. Um, <clears throat> So here's, I'm going to start out with task number two. Bear with me for a moment. Uh, add in an import statement, which is your preprocessor for the scanner in this thing. So I'd like for you to come up here into your code and inside of, on top of this thing, this is where you would put your scanner class file in this thing. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to label this thing as task number two. Number two, okay, you're going to add the import statement here to use the scanner class. Now, in your reading, you, you would talk about some of that import Java utility, okay? So, uh, how do you import, write that statement on here? Let me check the, the, the minutes here again, okay? So, um, let me talk to you about this task number two, where we, uh, where, where, where I'm going to talk to you about is if you look at the way how uh, you want to add in because you want to bring in, remember that one of the things that you bring in as the class is the scanner class. The scanner class allows you to basically what you have kind of like a blueprint, uh, a template. And anything that you bring into at the stage right now, um, you would actually have the same methods or properties as this class. It's like bringing in like a cookie cutter. And uh, this class is like a cookie cutter and you instantiate an object out of it. So this object has the same methods as this library file. Okay, so in here, here's what we're talking about is if you bring in, how do you bring it in? Uh, you do import, import, right? Um, the name of the Java dot util and dot scanner. All right, so you bring that in. That's This is where you bring in uh, to use the scanner class and you will instantiate an object and that object has access to this entire library file. That's what my point say. Okay. As we come down into this thing, uh, inside of this thing, this is where I like for you to come in and take a look at um, the code where I want to tab in and dent in with it. You will need to create your task number two here. Uh, you need to create a scanner class or object I should say here so you you write that scanner object right below here in this thing so it's very important that you bring in the scanner object because that scanner object I recommend you need to call it the scanner object is what keyboard or something along that line with it and from that point on um, I like for you to call it call the object Call it keyboard, word keyboard. Okay, so so use that word keyboard. So what you gonna do? Scanner. The right side is you know, you're gonna create a new scanner. So uh, let me walk you through here. It is again, I want to write this from the right side. So you have to use the word new space and the scanner. Okay, and inside that, that's a method. But inside this, you have a method that's called system.in with it. So you can fill in, okay, that method that's in your book. Talks about it. All of that, I'm going to put a semicolon right here, is actually assigned to the object name. And I like to use the word keyboard. Okay, so it keeps it very simple keyboard and of course you start out with the 
word scanner is the name of the class. So how does this work? Remember now, this equal sign means the right side equals to the left side. So you create a new scanner and the methods that actually exhibits from this scanner right here. And this is your object, it's called keyboard. Okay. So this right here is what? This is the class that you're going to use as the scanner class. From this point on, you will use the keyboard to read in whatever it's been brought in with it. So this will come this is for task number two I'd like for you to complete. The next one is this is an area where you actually put all your identifiers. Okay, let me check on that time here in a second here.